decided to make your woodworking or crafting video? That's cool. We're going to cover five key elements, things you need to know. You need to watch to see what it is you need to know to produce a high quality woodworking or craft video. We're also going to cover the key tips that will make it more effective and improve your performance in producing that video to make it faster. And again, improve the quality of your audio and your video. I'm going to cover all that right now. But before we get into any of that, I need you to do something. Right down here, I need you to like and subscribe. That's right. We're going to cover a lot of cool things. You want to be able to come back to this video and see all the other videos that we produce and get all that woodworking content and all the knowledge that we produce. Subscribe. Or is it up there? Not sure. And like. Hey there. Welcome back to Woodcrafting Place. Just in case you're wondering at this point exactly what that's all about, we're going to cover that. But that'll be part of one of my um, important tips that you need to keep in mind to get your audio correct, right? This uh, video is going to be about how we make woodcrafting and woodworking videos focus on the lathe. We're going to we'll do a pen making video at least show you the details of how we do those videos. We'll cover what the things you need to do to keep in mind. And at the end, found one of these tips better, more useful? Put it in the comments. What, which part did you like best? What did you use? Did you implement one or all the tips? Did you like the software? Or did you pick another software? Leave me a comment. Let me know what you found to be the most or least useful one. So we're going to cover the five key elements of making your craft video, your woodworking, your pen making, whatever it is you're making the video on, for the DIYer, okay? First one, very important, getting started. You need to select your topic, plan what the subject is, get the information you need, decide what you're gonna do. I'm gonna give you some things, some, some of the A-Ra-Ra that you really will help, will benefit you, first of all. You have a thought, you have an idea, you decide it's time to produce a video. YouTube is free. It's awesome. How, how much better can you get your voice out there and do it for free? So, you don't have a professional camera studio, you don't have professional equipment, you've never done it before. Um, first time any of us did it. None of us had ever done it before. So, don't let any of those things stop you. If you're waiting, till you're really good at it to do it, you'll never do it because no one starts really good at it. Uh, it can, you get better. So everyone's first video is pretty bad. Mine was, at least. And don't worry if it's not perfect because we'll talk about how to edit that video. Get it on video. Get it into the camera. And, there's a, and you'll be able to work it to video, to edit the video as you go. Number two, the equipment and software you're going to need. You don't need to go top end, but you are going to have to have some basic equipment. So my selected camera was a Samsung. Wasn't particularly picked for the brand, more so the features. First thing that I, that I knew I needed was rotating screen, as you can see here. This is particularly important. So when I'm on the other side of the camera and I need to know what the camera is seeing in the video, that's a must have. Next thing I wanted was an external microphone jack. And I'll talk about the microphones, but right now I'm talking into a Sony wireless microphone, which is connected to the external jack. You can see right here. The next must have being able to run your camera off of a power cord while you're doing your recording. If you're dependent on the battery and just the battery, when that battery runs out, you'll be talking away and doing your video and bang, it's gone. Having a cold shoe or hot shoe, depending on the brand, is very convenient. As you can see here, I've got a light put on top of the camera. Okay, so now, Looking at the front, here's what I consider to be a really important, not absolutely must have, but important, was 
a way to affix a separate external lens. In this case, it's a wide angle 0.45 lens. The last thing that I found extremely important, not absolutely required, but is a remote control. Now your camera should also have adjustability. You should be able to adjust the lighting capability, the EV, the shutter lighting, and it should give you a variety of settings. All of which in this case, I can do right here from the screen. Because after you're done doing all your, your filming, you're gonna edit it. Now, you probably have a laptop already, and there's a good chance it'll be up more inadequate for whatever it is you want to accomplish. A 64-bit Windows 7 or Windows 10 computer will be what you need. So from there, there's other accessories which you're going to want to consider along the way. You're going to want to focus on both the video part and the audio part, right? So for video, you're going to need things like tripods. Sooner or later, you're going to want to hold the camera still. Now when we talk about crafting today, we talk about filming uh, on the lathe, uh, making a pen, you're going to need something a little more specialized, something that can be fixed in a, a number of positions and particularly from above. As you saw, I'm hanging from the ceiling, so that way I can get a good camera angle. And I don't have to worry about things that are at my level getting in the way. Lighting. Accessories and lighting, as you saw, I have a LED light, which I did all kinds of crazy research and settled on straight, straight from Amazon. These things are available pretty cheap. It's got to be adjustable in both light intensity and color. Lights come in different temperatures called Kelvin. High at 6,500 all the way down to 2,000 have different white versus warmth. And we'll talk about, about that in lighting. The last accessory that you're going to want regarding is audio accessories. You're going to want some kind of microphone. I started with wired microphones. And I started with wired microphones extension. And I went to a wireless microphone. And eventually, after I believe four different wireless microphones, I settled on the Sony. Number three, lighting and audio. Said, bad audio makes for bad video. In your post editing, you're going to want to get a software it's called Audacity or something like Audacity. Audacity has features in it that allow you to pull noise out of your video. Now, so when you start making your videos, you want to give yourself five seconds, just dead silence. Because when you go in and edit your video later, you're going to find out it's not actually dead silent. The ambient noise will always be there. You'll use that five seconds to get a good profile of what your noise is. Once you have that, you can tell Audacity exactly what it is. It needs to isolate and remove. So you'll dial in your video settings best you can. You'll get your light so that people's faces and skin colors and background colors all look right. Get your focus right. You saw in your scene, I filled the scene with the lens activity, the lens delayed activity. If you choose to multi-camera, you both see from the front and above and off to the right so you can see an end view. That way if you're ever leaning over your, your project, you always have a good camera angle. This is what you want to do first. You want to do a test. Get sample footage, audio and video. Run a few minutes, run through your first scene, and then head off to the computer. It's a lot easier to get them right. And this is critical. Get them right at the beginning. Yes, you can do a lot of things in post-editing, but it's time-consuming. As you're doing your, your, your recording, one thing you want to be aware of the background noises even quiet ones that you barely even hear or think of those will stand right out now yes you can move a lot of that in post editing audacity remember audacity we mentioned that even audacity is not perfect 
what, you ha what happens is the more ambient noise you target and the more times you keep trying to take more background noise out, it will eventually affect your vocals. Number four, filming your footage and how to get the right shots. So as you're making your video, you've already decided what you're doing and all that good stuff. So the first thing I do is get the camera dialed in to the location that I want, get my screen, excuse me, my scene set up, put the, my field of action, the thing I'm really trying to show, I make sure is center screen, right in my hands as you can see here. So we'll move off to the lathe and we'll show you the camera setup. Right now I have a single camera pointed here because the in front of and over view pretty much gives you everything you need to know. If you, you see the whole scene, you, I don't get in the way, I know that, and I can see in my viewfinder, I'm good. So let's take it off to the next scene. Just to give you a little uh, snapshot of what the camera setup looks like. Look off to the right, you can see tripod setup, that's for side angles. Those are particularly useful if you're going to use two camera angles showing a end view of whatever you're, you're doing, whether it be working on the lathe or some other woodworking project. So let's get up close and you can see the camera angles now. Okay, so now you're getting a good view of what the up close camera angle is. And if we we're going to make our pen today, or whatever it is that we're crafting, Some advice when you're setting up your scene, you want to focus your camera so that you are you've got the entire scene of whatever it is you're filming filling the viewfinder. Those of you who are pen makers and know what I just did, you probably uh, could laugh right now. So we've also uh, we also have a side camera as I mentioned. That gives me a good end view. That gives you an understanding of how we set up the cameras. You'll see that the lighting is dialed in so that you have good color saturation. And if you don't get it perfectly right, you will have a chance to work on this post-editing. However, my advice is do your best to get good light balance, all of the, your, your video elements set up in the initial setup. And number five, post-editing your audio and your video once you have it all compiled and ready to go and producing your video. Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to head off to the computer and you're going to start working on your video editing software. For those of you just starting out, I highly recommend you go here and give this software a try. This is Movie Maker. A lot of people with older Windows computers Take a look, you might very well have this free software already embedded in your system. From there, I decided to go this direction. This is PowerDirector. 70 bucks was I think the price I paid. And it comes with multiple track capabilities so you can use multiple cameras as you can see. Now the awesome thing about this software is, and here you have two tracks. Now you can imagine that might get a little tricky synchronizing those. So, but this software has a great feature. You can see here, I go to clip, I select two of them. There we go. And you have this feature right here. It's called Sync by Audio. This software will actually go off and compare the audio of the two different video files, which you recorded simultaneously and it will line them up perfectly. Okay, so now you've taken all the video files, you've organized them in your video software, you've cut everything up the way you like it, transitions, all that. You're gonna go into produce. What you're going to do is you're going to produce an audio file. So in PowerDirector, you're gonna select the little music notes for audio. File extension, you want to use WAVE. We're going to go to Audacity. So I've already produced the audio from this, so 
and this is what you'll get. You'll end up with five seconds. Remember, the five seconds. You've been waiting, you've been patient. You hear that? All that hum and the hiss? That was dead quiet. That's just system ambient noise. You come into Audacity, you come here, noise reduction from all the features, click on Get Noise Profile. Now Audacity knows what our noise looks like. All right, so we're gonna go to Effects again, select Noise Reduction, I'm gonna say OK. Now, nice, hear that? That nothing, that's awesome. Now you will take this audio file, your file, export it. There's a lot of good guidance on what to do with Audacity. So that's it. Now that you have a new clean audio, you have good video just the way you like it. Now you go off, you produce your video and it'll be ready to upload to YouTube. So that's it. We're all done. Hopefully we met all your expectations. The goal was to cover the five steps, the key steps to creating a woodworking or crafting video, whether it's pen making or something else. We covered the first step of getting started, picking your video, deciding what the topic that you're comfortable with and that you can actually share with the world. The equipment that you'll need, step two. The camera, some of the must-haves, we talked about that. Step three, dialing in your audio and video getting all of the settings the way you need them so that you get good sound, good color saturation, that you can minimize your post editing when, when that time comes. Step four, getting your scenes so that the scene that you want actually fills the viewfinder. And last but not least, the post editing, right? We talked about audacity to help tune in your audio after the fact because there's always noise we showed you that what we thought was once a nice quiet scene turned out to be filled with hum and hiss five key steps which one did you use did you like any of those did you disagree with any of them leave me a comment if there's some that you need more explanation on you want me to do additional video i'd love to hear from you i'd love to do that video and of course, we covered some tips, some important tips, five important tips. Use these tips and you'll improve your video. You'll be able to improve the time and be more efficient in publishing your video. Like this video? Hit the thumb. Share the like. It's your turn. If you like what you saw, it's time to like the video. You want to hear more woodworking knowledge? You want some more guidance or something you want? Subscribe. Hit the bell. That way when we produce new topics every week, you'll get notified. Go out to your social media, your friends, your family, people you know want to start making videos for YouTube and they don't know where to start. Share this video. Send it out there and link back to it want to bring the knowledge to everyone we can so again like and subscribe we'll see you again soon in the next video thanks for watching